Organizing your designs in Figma can be a real challenge sometimes, especially if you work on multiple teams or you're managing multiple products. There's definitely no one size fits all, but in this video, I'm gonna show you three different templates of how you can set up and organize your file like a pro. So the first way to do this is by separating your designs by phase. So you'll typically have a exploration phase, you might have a ready for review in development and completed. And what I do is I'll give each of those phases its own page. So you'll see here we have this sandbox and typically the way I'll structure each of my designs is I wrap everything in a section and then I name that section with the ticket ID or name if there is one. If it's just a feature or I'm messing around then I'll just give it some name that makes sense. But if there is a ticket that we use, whether it's Notion or Jira or Trello, whatever it is your team uses, um, then I like to put the ticket title and then also make a link to where that's stored. That way, whoever's in here, they just have a nice backlink. And when they're switching between apps, everything stays in sync. I would highly caution against putting too much information here because it'll very quickly get out of sync. You could put some you know, high level description or any other notes, but don't try and put too much in here because it can get out of sync with whatever platform or ticketing management system you use. And then the benefit of having everything wrapped in a section is I can also right click this and then move it to the next phase. So when it's ready for review, I can just right click, click on move to a page and I can jump to where it is. And that entire section is essentially copied and pasted. Now you could just cut and paste, but I know for a fact that just moving across pages this way will retain any links to this ID or, or this section. So oftentimes I'll take this entire section, hit Command L and then paste that in with the ticket. That way it goes directly to where it is in the Figma file, not just the file link. And so when I move it across these pages, those links aren't gonna be broken and we don't have to update that outside of Figma. And then you can just keep doing this through all the different phases until eventually it's completed. And if after a while it's been sitting in the completed, you can eventually move it to an archive page. Now, sometimes at the top, I'll also give each designer or stakeholder their own page. This just gives everyone their own space to do whatever they want and work on design explorations while still working in the same file. Too often I've had other team members just work in their own file and then I don't have access to it or we're trying to copy and paste between things. And for the most part, you could just each get your own page and just keep adding to that one page unless you're working on something really, really big or for a really long period of time, Figma is probably gonna be able to handle all of your designs just in one page. And this also just helps the team dynamic of people not feeling like they're looking over your shoulder until you tell them to go look at the ready for review or look at in development. Now, if you do pay for dev mode seats on your team, you probably don't need an in development page. You could just mark your frames and sections as ready for dev. And then when they switch over to dev mode view, they're gonna automatically see all the designs that you've marked ready for review or ready for them to look at. But if you don't pay for that, then this is a good workaround. I think this structure works really well for teams who might not actually be tied to certain deadlines or necessarily organized into sprints. You're more concerned with the overall phase or status of your designs. And this is a really quick way for everyone on the team to see where things are. Now, if you do it organized by sprints, we can take a look at template two. The way I've set this up is typically by having a current sprints page. So anything that we're currently working on in this next little stretch is all gonna be contained to one page. So I typically have that same setup for the individual tickets, but then I also have these little section titles for the sprint number. This also makes it really easy when you're searching across Figma to find where that sprint is. But also if you work in very condensed sprints or you're doing just a lot of designs at once, you can group them together for a bit of a phase without having to constantly create a new page for every sprint. If your sprints are longer or you don't do as many, then you could probably get away with doing one page per sprint. But what I like to do is typically group them in units of five or 10. So here we have current sprints for 16 through 20 but then the previous sprints get a completed sprints page and I'll move them there again using that same move feature. And then that way they're still archived, they're still at the top, but most people are just gonna come in and look at the active sprints. So this works really well for completed designs that everyone signed off on and is just referencing for production. But when you're in the earlier phases of design, I think it's always great to have some sort of feature exploration section. 
So typically I'll have a page called feature exploration and I'll keep all of those small ideas contained there. And then if there's a bigger kind of epic or project that we're gonna take on, then I'll create a dedicated page for that. So this is great if you have multiple prototypes or tons of iterations. It's better to group that all in its own page rather than kind of bleeding into other uh, smaller tickets that aren't at all related. So it's still in my mind kind of grouped under the feature section, but you can dedicate that to that one page and then have all your smaller ideas contained on one page as well. Lastly, I also include some sort of prototype section. So if you have built out a prototype, you're presenting to some clients or stakeholders, and then you share that link with them, it's always a good idea to kind of isolate that from the rest of your file, just because those are live links and you never know when a client's gonna click on that and be looking at it. So it's always good to just have that defined. And I typically put the date there as well, just so you know how recent it might be. And then ultimately, if, if you know, after five, six months, you're good to archive it, you can take those designs and move it to archive or just delete the page. I'm a huge advocate of keeping designs, but ultimately separating in this way of sprints, features, and then prototypes has worked really well for me. The third way to do things is if your team is highly organized around individual tickets and not necessarily uh, structured into tons of sprints, then you can separate each individual page for a ticket. So the way I've done this is I'll create a page, I'll title it with the ticket number or ID, and then that ticket name. I try and copy exactly as it is in uh, you know, Jira or Trello, whatever we will use, and then that way it's easy to search across the file like all the other templates, but then it also gives you a lot of creative freedom and space to work for each ticket. So some tickets might be really small and you can just keep it really lightweight, but if it does turn into a broader task you're working on for multiple weeks or even months, then you have, again, the whole real estate of a page without worrying too much about performance or bleeding into other designs. But eventually you're gonna end up with hundreds of pages. And so you wanna probably set up some sort of section titles like I have here for your different phases. I'd also recommend moving out any archived or completed tickets as soon as you can, just to keep that number a little lower and it'll help out with your performance. One last thing I'll share is how I archive older designs. So if you have a ticket page that you're done with, you could just move it straight in here by copying and pasting, and then again, just labeling that page with the ticket number. But more often than not in the design phase, you come up with multiple versions that never really make it to production, but I think it's really good to document that so you always have it in the future. Inevitably, you're gonna have a stakeholder or a team member ask you about those designs, or you're gonna wanna go back and reference them for yourself. So what I'll usually do is take that feature name that I was working on and I'll actually label that in the page. So when I come into the archive file, I can quickly find those versions really quickly. If you're in a rush, you might wanna consider adding an inbox page where you can just paste anything uh, on the fly and then you can come back and sort them into individual pages later. But this has saved me many, many times when we've come back six months later and wanted to look at a design we had talked through and I've got everything preserved exactly how it was copied and pasted right into this file. So that's it for this video. I'd love to hear how some of you are organizing your file, so let me know down below. You can check out the links to all of these templates, which are completely free, down in the description. And if this was helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.